Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. Now, I'm a little bit obsessed, I admit it, about vehicle to grid, about what that could really mean in the future. So we've come to Amsterdam to visit a French company. A little bit confusing, but they're all over Europe. NG is a French company. They're here and they have one of the first working, functioning vehicle to grid systems in Europe. So Jakob, I've seen loads of vehicle-to-grid systems in exhibitions yeah. and in halls at motor shows. But, not actually, but this one is actually installed and actually is working, is that this right? This is actually working. This is right. not a demo. This is, we thought it was very important to really demonstrate that it works. Because right. all the mock-ups and all the ideas we wanted to demonstrate. Also for us, for testing, if everything is as it should be. Right. Uh, but that's why we made this demonstration project at our own office, right. where this car, its battery is connected to the uh, building. Right, and is there solar on this building or is that not on the There not is on so one? solar, there but is solar on. not on the building, but in the pond. So oh, there, the is, pond. there is floating in the, in, in the pond. Oh, floating solar. Fl floating solar, <laughs> floating solar. And uh, uh, which actually is also a very interesting thing with this charger is that you can directly connect the solar to right. this charger. Right. So normally you do the solar, solar connecting into the, to the, into the, the building, building and do the charger to the building yeah. and then it's very difficult to uh, to isolate the source, really. Absolutely, yeah. and yeah. also do the energy management. Uh, but if you do it uh, via the, the charger, it's even more efficient because you use only one uh, inverter. Right. Uh, and it's cheaper because you don't you have to buy another uh, inverter for the solar panels right. and even for the storage. Right. Oh, so the solar is feeding into into the inverter that's in here anyway. Yes. Yeah, so you have some sort of a small DC microgrid. Right. Yeah. Which is more efficient and cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And we like as Dutch, we like cheap. You do. We like cheap. <laughs> but then, so at the moment, I mean, is it possible to tell if that is that is probably charged now? This, this car. I think I this think. is charged, and then you you have a display on your app where you right. can say it's discharged, and I think you can even see it in the car. Right. And at the moment, because this is the other thing, is because we thought, oh, well, let's plug the iPace in. We can't because it's only Chatmo, isn't it? It's isn't only Chatmo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Chatmo pr protocol is uh, is well advanced to do bidirectional charger. Right. In my opinion, they are a little bit more ahead about the bidirectional opportunities. Oh, they are big time, yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's why we work with the uh, with the Shadow Protocol. So, but, I mean, could, so for instance, we've got we haven't we're not actually got the Leaf with us right now. But could we plug the Leaf in? Would that do the same thing? Seamlessly, yeah, right. absolutely, yeah. yeah. There's no, so there's not been a software update or anything special. No, 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 and that's that's the funny thing is everybody says, well, it's it's more like uh, uh, the V2G is something for pilots and only for a few cars. But yeah. even if so you look any, at any car with a with a Chatham at the moment would can work do this. Yeah, right. and there are a lot of Outlanders currently out there in the yeah. Netherlands. Yeah. So uh, everybody who drives an Outlander or wanted to drive an Outlander can now use the bidirectional right. functionalities. Yeah, the change is going to be because at the moment the expense of the, for, for instance, having one in your house, which I've fantasized for a long time yeah absolutely but at the moment they're very expensive they're uh, still too expensive too. Yeah, yeah 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 and there we are looking at business cases if you also also use the car for energy flexibility in the grid and then it's still too expensive yeah yeah so i think the the next generation will be a little bit smaller yes and a little bit cheaper so right. we think that within five years these uh well Big chargers will be as small as normal charging right. you know, and in the same price range. Up, you can put it on your wall and you yeah, just and plug you, your car absolutely, in. And, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. There's so many sort of other aspects of vehicle to grid that is fascinating, but one, um, the one I've heard is that it, a lot of people are saying it actually improves battery life rather than diminishes it. I don't know if you. Yeah, that's, that's something that we investigated. Right. And uh, it's hard to say really improve yeah. because batteries but it will never improve. It but doesn't it doesn't really degrade it. Rapidly. No, everything is about cycles, yeah. and it's about the depth of the cycles because every uh, a certain battery has a certain amount of cycles yeah. uh, within the degradation of the battery. And uh, if you drive a car, these cycles are very short, yeah. and they have a, a, a certain characteristics. And if you do uh, vehicle to grid, there are de deeper cycles, right? Which, for all the uh, the diversity of the cycles, is really important for the battery. Otherwise, right. it's uh, it's de degrading uh, sooner. It's a little bit technical than this, yeah. but this is the. But it's but basically terms. it's charging and discharging much slower than when you're driving it. Yes, you, you know, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So it's a much, it's a much gentler use of the battery. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. If you're looking at the energy transition, uh, everybody is thinking about uh, the, the big problem is storage. Yeah. And uh, we within Engie th was, was thinking about well, if you look at, at storage, and look at the new business models, because I was really inspired by let's say Uber which is yeah. the biggest taxi company without only any taxis. Yeah. Uh, or cabs, as you say. Yeah. Um, 
uh, looking at Airbnb, which is the biggest hotel chain without owning any bed. So yeah. we were thinking, well, how can we be the biggest flex provider or storage provider right. without owning any, any batteries? Right. Everybody is buying batteries, buying batteries. Yeah. Why don't we don't buy batteries, but use batteries that are already there? And then if you look at the well, cars are 90 to 95% of the time, they are standing They're still. They're doing nothing, yeah, which is the big So why don't we that. use those batteries? That's why we really invest in smart charging and also in bi-directional charging. Right, right. And then if you connect it to the building in this, in this case, it gives you a wide range of other options because when the power, if there is a power blackout within this building, uh, we can maintain, let's say, the elevators and uh, some sort of uh, well, emergency lighting, emergency all lighting right. for, let's say, two hours. Right. So you make a building a little bit more safe. Yeah. And at the other hand, you and can that's do with one car. I mean, if you had, if all the cars here were electric and they were all joined to it, you could run the whole building for. You can run the whole days. building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we did some optimizing. We think that if you have a like building like this, four bidirectional chargers, up to six, will be the optimal. Right. and all the other will be normal chargers. So it will right. always I be see. a hybrid solution. Right. Uh, not all chargers will be uh, bi-directional. No. Uh, but the, the funny thing, and that could be save you a lot of money, uh, was peak shaving. Yes. Because you see that if uh, a building starts operating, everybody starts working, uh, and also <coughs> starts uh, charging your car, yeah. uh, there is a, a big, a big, big peak. Jump. Right. So if that on that peak you deliver power from your car, but there's still some energy left in it, or not charging, you can do real peak shaving. Right. That can save you a lot of money yeah. in the year. Because I mean, I suppose that's the business model. It's going to be. It is a good one to think. Of. I think Airbnb is probably a better, better. But that's uh, that's the event. That's the end goal. That's the end yeah, goal. Yeah. Because because if there were you know uh, two million electric cars in the Netherlands and a lot of vehicle to grid systems installed, there's presumably then got to be financial incentives of some sort for the owners of yes. the vehicles yes, to, yes. To, to use that. Because then you think, oh, it is worth me plugging into this system. And that's, and and that's my, my opinion that eventually we now pay for charging. Yeah. And I think uh, in the long term, we will get paid to be connected. Right. Connected. Yes. Yeah. So a connection fee or something like yeah. that. And if you, yeah. uh, if you leave your car and it can be uh, for the charge point operator to use the flexibility yeah. of your battery and that can earn you some money. And that's what you're doing at Engie then? That is the, 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 the end goal of what you're trying Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. We out. want to be the, uh, we want to have a very important role in the energy transition. We say right. we want to be the leader in the energy transition and we see that if you work with electric vehicles you can do two things. You can optimize your fleet, you can decarbonize your fleet, yeah. but also at the other hand if you do systems like this you can do additive storage, which accelerates your energy transition because you, well, uh, yeah, flexibilize. Yes. Is, I yeah. don't know if that's a proper word. It's but, a uh, really good word. Yeah, yeah. I think we should introduce it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> the energy grid. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. that's important because yeah. that's the most. Uh, that's, that, that's the thing we don't really know how it's going to happen. There are no. be there are going to be more solar. There are going to be more wind, which yeah. is more flexible. Uh, and how are we going to cope with that? Yeah. Well, that's why electric vehicles also can help. Yeah. yeah. Jakob then wanted me to see another energy storage system they're using at NG, this time at an office nearby where the roof was already covered in solar PV. So we hopped in the Kona in the I-Pace and drove up the road to take a look. So Jakob, this is a green porter cabin outside an office block. Yes. Oh, oh I... I'm not that clever, but I think I get it. Batteries inside. So batteries. Yeah. I'm assuming what this is doing is, is, is it powering the office or is it, is it connected to the office in it's, some way? It, absolutely. It's connected to the office and especially to the solar panels, which is- oh, So there's solar on the roof of this building. Absolutely. Right. And then, uh, well, it was our test and we wanted to test that we think if you look at all the raw materials in the world, uh, lithium ion is, is, is it could be very rare if you want to be. Uh, if you're really going to use if it. If you're a lot. really going to yeah. use it a lot, and for the energy transition, it's really important that there's a lot of storage. Yeah. So therefore, together with our waste company Suez, um, we thought, well, maybe there are second life batteries, normal second life batteries, who we can replace with lithium ion. Right. Because why use a very high performance battery to do very low performance, low performance storage? Job. Okay. So these so are lead, these are lead acids. These then? are lead acids. Yeah. These oh, are right, normal are. normal right, batteries we, we, we see in, in 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 cars. Yeah. Everybody knows them. Yeah. Uh, but these are second life. So they are right. basically from the waste. 
uh, oh, yeah. company straight up to here. So they're not, they're probably not good enough to use in a vehicle, but they're no, they're no, no, they're 80, they, they have uh, more or less 80% still uh, capacity, wow. uh, which for us is perfect. Yeah, uh, and uh, when the state of charge of a certain box is below a, a certain level, then we just switch the box, right? Because this is very cheap, cheap storage, right? And therefore, right. it's important. And it's, I mean, the demands on it, so when you're charging it. Yeah, it's sort of a constant, which you presumably can regulate with that. But then Absolutely. when you're discharging it, it's the same thing. It's not a sudden massive demand. No, you could don't can't do any frequent frequency containment or frequency right. control. Right. Uh, so you can do high high power uh, balancing of the grid, but you can do perfect storage. Right. For buildings like this. And in terms of capacity, do you know roughly what that? This what is, that is more or less 60 kilowatt kilowatt oh, hours. Oh yeah. God, so it's 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 it's, it's, right. it's 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 a little bit more than people yeah. think, but yeah. uh, uh, and we can stack it up a little right. bit more. So you could put you could add absolutely. To it. The only the only limitations is the weight. So it's yeah. it's it's pretty heavy. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to have a, a real volume, you have to need you need a, a bigger a big, container. A bigger container. Bigger container. But in a sense, it's modular. You could just keep. You know, if you for a bigger building, you could have absolutely, you could have absolutely, it. and it's very cheap. Right. Because uh, if you so buy you're not new, buying new batteries, no, we getting. really uh, reuse uh, batteries that are already in the recycling process. Right, right. But before we recycling it, uh, eventually, yeah, uh, to uh, raw materials, we use it for storage. And you, I mean, what what sort of a time can these operate then? I mean, how long, how much can um, you extend their life, if you like? Uh, we think in order of one or two years. Right. Oh, I see. So it's not ten years. No, it's, it's one not or two ten years. No, one or one or two. That's right. what study now shows. Right. But uh, 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 it possibly it's higher. But we think well, then we swap the batteries because yeah. we want to have a surface, a certain service service level to our customers yes, that they have the storage capacity. Yeah. So uh, I mean, what is amazing to think though is that those, you know, five years ago those batteries would literally have been busted up and recycled straight Absolutely. away when straight they still away. had. So you're actually adding a couple of years of useful. Absolutely, production. and they they add extra value. Right. Uh, and eventually, we think that uh, uh, this value, if there's more uh, value to be made from flexibility in the grid, yeah, you can make some really money, some right. real real money. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Because yeah. I mean, also, because when you think, I'm thinking, oh, how many of these batteries are there? We've just been passed by probably yeah. a couple of hundred thousand of them while we've been standing here. There's yeah, a absolutely. lot of them around. I mean, they're absolutely. really common, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. 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 These are old uh, batteries, for instance, be used in uh, data centers. Right. Uh, basically never used. Oh, I see. But, right. uh, but they were there as a, but as a, as as a, a backup, as energy, a backup. energy right. backup. And after a couple of years, they are they're right. going to be recycled. Wow. But wow, why? Right. Yeah. So that's uh, the, the, these types of batteries are, are very high quality, but right. you can also use a, a lower quality right. batteries. Yeah. Right. Well, the funny thing I wanted to demonstrate was that yeah. the high tech things uh, with these high tech projects. Uh, uh, eventually come with very low-tech solutions because right. one of the problems we had was that um, if you look at these batteries when they're all connected there's a lot of power on this yeah uh, so you can't switch very safely right uh, so that was the limitation of all the things we could do but we wanted to switch so uh, oh, as in as in take one lot take out, one and out put a yeah, new one in. yeah but right. but but there is current tension on, yeah. the, uh, on the on the battery pack so uh, eventually we come with event switches which we are used for carnivals or oh, stuff right. like that wow. which gives us the opportunity to plug them out while they're on their, while they're on, uh, on on their, their complete charge. power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was wow. one of the things. So that's a ready existing technology. Absolutely. This very low tech. Yeah, it's very yeah. low tech solution. But wow. for us, it was very high tech yeah. uh, for this for this project. Uh, so you can just you presumably bring a forklift in to lift them out and then yeah. you just unplug yeah. it and you plug Absolutely. a new one in. Absolutely. And the whole system manages to cope with that. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. So uh, eventually, this is a container with a couple of uh, batteries. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of <laughs> for other us, bits. Yeah. For us, it was a very important yes. project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for. Uh, really hope you enjoyed that. I think there's some really exciting stuff happening in the world of, of energy storage as we're seeing. It's just emerging. It's just starting to actually make an impact. Uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Please have a look at the Patreon link beneath this video and uh, click the little bell icon at the top right-hand side of your screen. There, yes. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>